guys, welcome back. Today we are doing our bi-weekly tank maintenance. We're going to go ahead and um, I'll go step by step on what I usually do. I'm going to break the video up so it's not two hours long, but that's usually how long it takes me to do this is about one and a half to two hours. We're going to go ahead and we'll go over the equipment that we're going to use. Um, what we're going to end up doing is scraping the back glass. We're going to take a razor blade and doing that. Get all the algae and coralline and all the crustaceans and stuff off the back glass. We're going to clean the power heads with a brush. We're going to do silicone work. We're going to do the algae up to the silicone with a razor blade. And then finally we're going to do a water change. Oh, I missed one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, pull off the rocks with a turkey baster as well. So can't forget that. Then we'll do a water change. Uh, we'll speed up the pumps and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Alright guys, let's get into the equipment. Alright, first things first, we got 20 gallons of RODI water that we got from our system and we have it uh, already up to 1.026. I use a, just a cheap 100 watt heater, set it to the roughly within a degree of the tank and then I use a power head to mix that, just a standard, I don't know what it is, I've had it for a few years now. So, uh, let that, I usually let it mix overnight and then we're good to go for the next day. All right, so now we're into the tools that we're going to use for the maintenance today. It doesn't have to be any fancy. It can be stuff that you pick up from the local hardware store or the Dollar Tree. You don't need to be spending tons of money on uh, fancy equipment to do a water change or tank maintenance. So we're going to use this same power head. Uh, in the, at, at the end, we're going to basically put it around the rocks and underneath the rocks to blow up all the detritus to try to get it suspended so the filter sock can pick it up. We have these uh, Dollar Tree little razors that come in here. They clip in, and then we use that to get the silicone next to the silicone. That way, we don't, uh, you know, break, you know, break the silicone and cause a uh, tank leak. So these work great. I hit like four to six for a dollar. I don't remember something like that. Our brush we're using the Zeovis system to do the rocks, any seams, anything like that. Of course, turkey baster for the rocks. Our tube. I put a little extension on this, and then do a siphon out into five gallon buckets, do about three of those, and then do the water change with that amount of water that's in that original bucket that you just saw, and uh, any extra we put into the sump and then drain out to the proper level, okay? That way we don't end up pulling too much water out of the tank and then not having enough to refill it. I've, I've done that a couple times, it's not fun. The extended razor, again, we're gonna put a new blade on here, screws in, get behind the rock work and all that good stuff. All right, let's move on to the tank. All right, now we're on the right-hand side of the tank on the far end. We're gonna show you the back wall and how we clean that with the razor blade. One quick note before you get started, make sure you wash your hands, your arms. Basically rinse them, don't use any soap, just water. But rinse them up to your elbows or up however deep your hand's gonna be in the tank just to get any oils or whatever you might have touched previously just to make sure you keep it out of the tank. So, all right, let's get started. Come in here with a razor blade. It's pretty easy stuff. Pissing off snails. And I'm going to leave the power heads on because they will be able to uh, keep everything suspended and hopefully get it picked up by the filter side. Try to get pretty close to the silicone. We'll go ahead and take care of that afterward with the uh, other razor blade just to make sure we don't damage the silicone. Now a lot of people don't clean the back glass. Um, they say it keeps it natural and all that good stuff, but I, would, I like the way it looks when it's clean. The background, you know, it's reflected on the coral. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be cleaner. Now you could avoid the coralline algae and just get the brown algae, um, but I don't really mess with that, I just get it all.
don't know if you noticed yet, but I removed the clownfish, one of them, the, uh, what was it, the maroon clown, yeah, he, uh, you know, when you bite me, every time I put my hand in the tank, it gets old, so I went ahead and I put him in the Zeovit system by himself, and moved the uh, Clarkies in here last night, so, they're a little bit happier, there's more room, and uh, I don't have to deal with the uh, shithead. other side we'll come back and get the rest of it actually there is a little bit right there that one spot behind the gorgonian I gotta get first sorry Zayze watch out man all right now we're on the far left side of the tank we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here and like I said, if you want to keep the coralline, go ahead. Um, I'm just going to scrape off the majority of it. And if you want to clean the frag rack, which I actually have, if you have a frag rack there, it's a good time to clean the back of it. Just pull the suction cups off or the magnets and scrape that as well. Let's get started here. a month but I've been changing it recently to every two weeks it's just um, it's been getting I think it might be just because I'm feeding more but it's getting dirtier a lot sooner so I just recently changed it to every two weeks oh, Mr. Snail normally So I'm going to have to do a little bit and then look on the other side. Watch out, buddy. Come on. Watch out. It's getting tough. It's getting tough. Yeah, it's really hard to see. There we go. Again, you're not looking to get 100% off, you know, 90% or so. Anything's better than nothing. and keep going. Alright, so I'm going to finish this up because I know no one wants to sit here and watch me scrape glass for 45 minutes. So, let me finish this up and we'll come back.
Also going to make sure you do the lower end of the front of the glass. Lots of Coraline. It's a good time to flip your frags back over that uh, the clown keeps tipping over, but he's no longer in here, so hopefully that will stop. One downfall of algae is that uh, you can really tell the tank has been scratched over the years. It just kind of fills in there. It's pretty nasty stuff. So if you have scratches on your tank, you've definitely got to do this. There, they just magically disappear as soon as the algae is gone. Alright, now that we have gotten the majority of the algae on the lower end and on the back wall, we're going to take our little Dollar Tree razor and we're going to get the upper end of the tank in silicone. Move this power head. right up to the silicone. You see why it takes so long? Actually, I do have a little bit of damage to my tank. You see this little divot here? It's actually just a piece of glass that we were moving and it hit a stairwell and it basically just chipped out a piece of glass. I filled it with silicone and it, uh, it's been holding for several years now. So, um, Just a quick note on these blades. Make sure when you take them out and you're done, you dry them or they will rust immediately. Uh, it's pretty quick, actually. Even just waiting a couple hours. So now we're at the top of the tank. You see the core line has started to spread. Just take the razor blade again. Alright, I just finished scraping off the glass with the razor blade. Now we're going to attempt to remove some of this pulsing zine with some tweezers. Um, it might be too soon. I usually wait till the stalks get a little bit bigger, but we're going to try to do this uh, now. So I can't stand the way this shit looks. Okay. Try to get as far down on the base as you can. There we go. One piece. Do what you want with it. Uh, I throw it away. Guess if you really want to, you could put it on a frag plug and get rid of it. One th one thing to know is um, don't let these little pieces. If you accidentally take off a little piece, don't let it get away in the tank. Cause that shit is why this. Is like this right now. I know you can do it with fish in line and all that, but I think you need they need to be a little bit bigger. This has always been successful for me. Throw tweezers. Oh, there's a piece. Yeah, shit. Well, that ain't gonna happen. Maybe it will get caught up in the filter sock. 
All right, so now we're here with the turkey baster. I just put the power head in. As you can see, it's really mixed up the tank. It's definitely cloudy. So we're gonna go through and uh, turkey baste all the corals and get any of the stuff off of them and underneath and the rock and all that good stuff while the power head continues to pump everything. Now actually, actually at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the main pump all the way up as well. All right, so we'll get everything moving. I'm actually going to um, take this opportunity to move some coral around. I have uh, one over here that I want to move uh, down in this direction. Lower because it's starting to touch. It hasn't encrusted off the plug yet so I can still move it. But uh, unfortunately once it goes off the plug it's it's there. So I figured I might as well do it before before that time comes. Just like the Zeobus system. You just get in here the rocks will piss everybody off while we're doing this. I don't know how people feel about directly blasting a colony, but I like to I always get stuff out of it. Because um, deep down inside, I mean, depending on how much flow you have in your tank, um, it's not exactly uh, very clean. And shit does get stuck in there, so... Back. Definitely liking these new clownfish in here because I haven't been attacked yet. And uh, you know, it's it's. I know it's only a fish, but um, he doesn't. You know, it's not the fact that it hurts. It's the fact that it's out of nowhere and he's a dickhead and he doesn't stop doing it. It's a lot in this colony. Doesn't see that, but this is tons of stuff coming out of this one. I think it's pretty nasty and I'm sure a majority of it will settle back down somewhere else but not all of it and uh, the key to success is being consistent with this and uh, doing what you feel will make it successful and I feel that spending you know an hour to two hours every two weeks in here um, breeds success All right, let's move on to the next one. See, get chunks out. And just an FYI, if you uh, if you just placed a frag in here, don't just directly slam it with a. I mean, it's not too much coming out of this, but it's definitely enough. I've blown frags across the tank just doing this, and luckily, like, um, I have space between the wall now, so I'm able to pull frags out from behind the tank, which is always nice, or behind the rockwork, sorry, which is nice. This video is going to be long as shit. Just got a feeling. I'm going to definitely shorten some of it. So I'm not really sh sure on a scale of 1 to 10 how exciting it is to watch somebody turkey based rock. I just know that uh, I've had people ask me how I take care of my tank, so this is the answer that you're getting. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I spend 10 minutes every two weeks and I've you know have good coral growth because of that and good water parameters that's not reality all right we're here on the final section of rock the final I want to say section but mound of rock boy is it nasty because it seems like the flow goes around the tank and everything settles down here um, but I got those new power heads coming and we're going to connect them to the apex once the apex core gets here and I'll be replacing this, I can't really see it, but uh, this JVO uh, WP40 with two uh, JVO 
RW15s, one on each side, which will all be programmed to the Apex um, varial speed port. And we'll go through the process of that, how to do that, and set up profiles, and um, basically we'll be able to control the tank, because I want to get surges on different angles, that's some nasty shit. Um, get some surges through the tank to get this stuff up off the, the glass. What's good is we're going to move most of this around back to this corner here, um, here in a few minutes with the power head, which will allow us to siphon out a majority of it. And actually what's kind of good is every time I do this I end up causing uh, accidental fragging, so we'll be doing a fragging video. And also I have um, new containers for the calcium alkalinity I picked up at the um, local Ollie's and we'll be doing that as well. So we got a lot to do today. Alright, let's get going. Alright, the final step to um, moving the detritus around before we do the water change is I'll take the power head off the side. Right. And just simply spread the uh, to try this off the bottom and try to move it all to that side of the tank. That's the goal here. And I was using the other power head that was just hanging off here. And, uh, it just gave me a little bit of a jolt. So, um, we're not playing that game. For whatever reason, I mean, I've been using it forever. It, it decided to do that today, so, yeah, we're not. So what we're gonna do is 90% of the detritus is over here on the other side of the tank. So we'll go ahead and start siphoning water out and do the water change. Alright, so now we're back ready to do the actual water change. I took a regular pipe, okay, and added the uh, one half inch pipe and then put it inside. Basically, it's it's stiffer than regular pipe and it allows me to get underneath the rocks. So, that's just a little bit easier and snails don't get caught in it as often. So, let's get started on this water change. Oh yeah, make sure you turn your pump off and all your alarms and all that junk. I have a switch underneath... Uh, the stand that goes to a breakout box that turns everything off in one switch. So it's a pretty good investment. We'll get into setting that up uh, down the road as well. Now you can just pull water out if you wanted to and not try to siphon up anything, but that's what takes so much longer is trying to siphon out the majority of the stuff. And the salt water tastes like shit.
house would get underneath the rocks, that's for sure. So the only downfall is you get picking up snails and crap like that. That's the only problem with it all. Cleaner shrimp coming over to say hi. I'll show you guys what the water looks like here in a second. It's definitely good. Our first bucket. Let me show you what that looks like. Can zoom in. Uh, so, all right, let's get started on this one. I've seen a lot of snail shells lately. I wonder if it's my eel, uh, Reggie. I mean, I feed him twice a week silver sides, but he's still always out and about looking. So I wonder if he's the one that's taking out the snails. No matter what I do, every time I go to siphon water, I get it in my mouth every single time. I'm going to have to sit here through this whole process, tasting it. Got a snail. Got a snail. Alright, we're here with the 20 gallons worth of water ready to go. The maxi jet that we used in the Zeovis system to fill that one back up. And then our return line is in the tank. So let's go ahead and just start filling it up. It takes about 15 minutes or so, roughly. Alright, as it's filling up, we're going to do a one, a one over with the magna flow. Just to get anything that we might have missed. side once it's full. Alright, so now we're down in the sump. We're still filling up the main tank. We might as well talk about this. Every two weeks I'll come in here and remove about five gallons worth of potato and you know either give it to a local fish store or somebody around here. So if you live near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and you want Chato, hit me up. Um, I have no problem giving it away. Uh, I'll usually take care of the skimmer and um, every every two weeks to three weeks we come in here and clean out the outputs of the biopellet reactor and also the air input um, from outside. I know that uh, the bacteria builds a white film that seems to get uh, clog up the air input, which then slowly raises the water level in the skimmer. And uh, we got to clean that out to continue to uh, skim properly. But I already did all that stuff last week because that's when it kind of fell in the cycle. Um, and also we have another week to two. I think you know we have two weeks till we got to change the GFO out and the carbon. Um, some people will change the carbon out every, I mean, the GFO oil out every six weeks and then change the carbon out every four weeks. I just change them both at the same time, um, just for the sake of getting it done. 
All right, so we just turned everything back on. The main pump is kicking on. It's slowly ramping up the uh, DC 6000, so it takes a couple minutes to get to full power. Um, once the sump levels out, water-wise, we will drain out the excess water in the, uh, in the sump, and then we'll be good to go. All right, you know how I said before that I like to put extra water in? Well, the water line is right here. It's supposed to be here, so if we're going to just I threw a maxi jet in there, and we're just going to pump out the rest of it. It's usually not that much. The uh, switch kick on here in a second, and then we'll turn everything off. There we go. All right, guys, that's it. We just finished everything. The tank is going to be cloudy for the next couple hours. The filter socks will pick up most of the detritus that's floating around and we will change those tomorrow morning. Other than that, it's good to go. The fish are out and about now. The corals are still closed up and they will be for a little bit. Um, I just put all the pieces of frags that we accidentally fragged, um, which is pretty common. It's just smaller pieces of SPS, um, nothing extreme. It's not like we knocked a whole colony off. But uh, we'll do a quick video on um, fragging those real quick and then putting them on the rack and then I will move that uh, encrusting SPS that I want to move you know move to the other side of the tank because it's um, getting in the way now so I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll be back um, if you like the video go ahead and uh, like it subscribe and comment if you do anything differently go ahead and let me know uh, I'm always up for suggestions as you can see I struggle on a couple things um, I don't know if it's because I'm trying to videotape it but either way we got it done so all right, guys. I'll talk to you later.